Good morning. Alrighty, so we are going to be in number still. Apologies for ending early yesterday. Jess was not feeling well. Um, mm -hmm. Trying to get used to new meds, and um, mm -hmm. I'm on some mm -hmm. anti-nausea meds now. So hopefully that'll help me not feel sick. Um, but it's never fun starting new something. But change is all part of life, so there you go. Um, again, numbers eight, and let's see, our weather is not raining, but it's definitely cold and windy, so I hope, uh, wherever you're at, you're safe, and you're warm, and you're healthy, and, um, if not, I pray that you get safe, warm, and healthy, healthy, <laughs> um, but thank you for joining me this morning, and let's go ahead and open in prayer. Lord, I just thank you for this day, and I thank you for your word, and I thank you that you love us. Help us to understand your word and apply it to our lives. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you do. Thank you that you love us, and that you care about us, and that you meet our needs, and that in any and all situation, we can trust in you. And Lord, we just thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So, we are in Numbers 8, and it's talking about the seven lamps. So now the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to Aaron and say to him, when you set up the lamps, the seven lamps shall give light in front of the lampstand. And Aaron did so. He set up its lamps in front of the lampstand as the Lord commanded Moses. And this was the workmanship of the lampstand, hammered work of gold from its baits to its flowers. It was hammered work. According to the pattern, the Lord had shown Moses. So he made the lampstand. Now the cleansing of the Levites. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the Levites from among the people of Israel and cleanse them. Thus you shall do to them to cleanse them. Sprinkle the water of purification upon them and let them go with a razor all over their body and wash their clothing and cleanse themselves. Then let them take a, full, take a bowl from the herd and its grain offering of fine flour mixed with oil. And you shall take another bowl from the herd for a sin offering. And you shall bring the Levites before the tent of meeting and assemble the whole congregation of the people of Israel. And when you bring the Levites before the Lord, the people of Israel shall lay their hands on the Levites and Aaron shall offer the Levites before the Lord as a wave offering from the people of Israel that they may do the service of the Lord. Then the Levites shall lay their hands on the heads of the bulls and you shall offer the one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering to the Lord to make atonement for the Levites. And you shall set the Levites before Aaron and his sons and shall offer them as a wave offering to the Lord. So the Levites were a tribe. They were different family tribes um, because of the, each of the 12 brothers. And the Levites were the ones that were set up to take care of the tabernacle and the tent of meeting and all the things he needed for that to help Aaron as the priest. So that you shall prepare the Levites from among the people of Israel, and the Levites shall be mine. And after that, the Levites shall go in to serve at the tent of meeting when you have cleansed them and offered them as a holy wave offering. Oh, offered them as a wave offering. For they are wholly given to me from among the people of Israel instead of all who open the womb, the firstborn of all the people Israel. I have taken them for myself. So instead of taking every firstborn, he's taken the Levites. For all the firstborn among the people of Israel are mine, both man and of beast. On the day that I struck down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I consecrated them for myself. And I've taken the Levites instead of all the firstborn among the people of Israel. And I've given the Levites as a gift to Aaron and his sons from among all the people of Israel to do the service of the people of Israel at the tent of meeting and to make atonement for the people of Israel that, they may be, that there may be no plague among the people of Israel when the people of Israel come near the sanctuary. So he said the people of Israel a lot of times. So basically they're there to help Aaron to take care of the temple, the, the tent of meeting, and to um, intercede for the people of Israel. So thus did Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the people of Israel to the Levites. According to all the Lord commanded Moses concerning the Levites, the people of Israel did to them. And the Levites purified themselves from sin and washed their clothes, and Aaron offered them as a wave offering before the Lord. 
And Aaron made atonement for them to cleanse them. And after the Levites went in to do their service in the tent of meeting before Aaron and his sons, as the Lord commanded Moses concerning the Levites, so they did to them. So everything is set up just as the Lord commanded. They continue to use them um, and purified them and got them set up to be able to help Aaron with the duties of the temple. So now there's a retirement of the Levites. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, This applies to the Levites. From 25 years old and upward, they shall come to duty in the service of the tent of meeting. Now the footnote says, He. So... He shall come. Um, this applies to the Levites from 25 years old and upward. And he or they shall come. Good morning, Shinsuke. Glad that you're here. To the tent of meeting. And from the age of 50 years, they shall withdraw from the duty of the service and serve no more. They minister to their brothers in the tent of meeting by keeping guard, but they shall do no service. Thus, they sh thus shall you do to the Levites in assigning their duties. And the footnote says he ministers. So he ministers to his brothers in the tent of meeting by keeping guard, but they do no service. So he would continue to minister, but he would not continue to have to work and serve. And that's pretty, that's very in line with what we need to do today. Though there may come a time we retire from our work job nine to five whatever that is that we pull the check and w-2s and all that good stuff um there should come a time where we retire and then we are dedicated to ministering now that does when we retire does not mean that we retire from all of our ministries you continue continue to minister until you are no more because that's god's calling for your life that keeps you in line with what god has for you so they continued to minister, though they did not continue to serve. So now the Passover is celebrated. The Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they had come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Let the people of Israel keep the Passover at its appointed time. On the fourteenth day of this month at twilight, you shall keep it at its appointed time according to all its statutes and all its rules. You shall keep it. So Moses told the people of Israel that they should keep this, the Passover. And they kept the Passover in the first month on the 14th day of the month at twilight in the wilderness of Sinai, according to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so the people of Israel did. And there were certain men who were unclean th through touching a dead body, so that they could not keep the Passover on that day. And they came before Moses and Aaron on that day, and those men said to him, We are unclean through touching a dead body. Why are we kept from bringing the Lord's offering? at its appointed time among the people of Israel. And Moses said to them, Wait that I may hear what the Lord will command concerning you. So Moses didn't pretend to have all the answers. Moses didn't know what to give these men as an answer. So he's seeking God. We need to take um, note of that because there may be times where we're posed with a question and we don't know what the answer is. But we can say, you know, I'm going to seek God for that and I'll get back to you. And that's what he did. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel, saying, If any one of you or of your descendants is unclean through touching a dead body or is on a long journey, he shall keep the Passover to the Lord. In the second month, on the fourteenth day at twilight, they shall keep it. They shall eat it with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs. They shall leave none of it until the morning, nor break any of its bones. According to all the statutes of the Passover, they shall keep it. But if anyone who is clean and is not on a journey fails to keep the Passover, that person shall be cut off from among his people because he did not bring the Lord's offering at its appointed time. That man shall bear his sin, and if a stranger sojourns among you and would keep the Passover of the Lord according to the statute of the Lord and according to its rule, so shall he do." You shall have one statute, both for the sojourner and for the native. So, they still needed to keep the Passover, even if um, they were a stranger in the land. If they were willing to do it, they needed to do it. And so, we see that that's what they did. And now there's a cloud covering the tabernacle. So, on the day that the tabernacle was set up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, the tent of the testimony. So, if you remember... 
Since they came out into the desert, there's been a cloud that was over them by day and a pillar of fire by night that kept them warm and the cloud that gave them cover. So now the cloud is covering the tent of testimony. And at evening, it was over the tabernacle like the appearance of fire until morning. And so it, all, so it was always the cloud covered it by day. And the footnote says... By day, Septuagint, Syriac, Vulgate, Hebrew says, oh, they all lack the words by day. So if you read it without by day, it says, so it always, so it was always, the cloud covered it, period, not by day. The cloud covered it and the appearance covered it by day or not by day. So covered it and it appeared a fire by night. So that's how it reads without by day. And whenever the cloud lifted from over the tent, after the people of Israel set out, and in the place where the cloud settled down, there the people of Israel camped. And the command of the Lord, the people of Israel set out, and at the command of the Lord, they camped. And as long as the cloud rested over the tabernacle, they remained in the camp. Even when the cloud continued over the tabernacle many days, and the people of Israel kept the charge of the Lord and did not set out. Sometimes the cloud was a diff was a few days over the tabernacle, and according to the command of the Lord, they remained in camp. Then, according to the command of the Lord, they set out. And sometimes the cloud remained from evening until morning, and when the cloud lifted in the morning, they set out, or if it continued for day and night, when the cloud lifted, they set out. Whether it was two days or a month or longer that the cloud remained or continued over the tabernacle, the cloud continued over the tabernacle abiding there the people of Israel remained in the camp and did not set out but when it lifted they set out and at the command of the Lord they camped and at the command of the Lord they set out they kept the charge of the Lord at the command of the Lord by Moses so we see that the people are not doing things on their own they're not making their own plans they are waiting on God another really good message for us Hold on just a second. Let me see if I can pause. Mm, guess I can't pause. Okay. So now we're going to go into Mark. We're going in Mark 13, 14 through 37. Now Jesus is talking and he's um, teaching the disciples. And we're learning about the abomination of desolation. Now this is end times prophecy. So we haven't seen it yet, so what, but when you see the abomination of desolation standing where he ought not to be, let the reader understand, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let the one who is on the housetop not go down, nor enter his house to take anything out, and let the one who is in the field not turn back to take his cloak. And alas, for the women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants in those days, pray that it may not happen in winter. For in those days there will be such tribulation that has not been from the beginning of the creation that God created until now, and never will be. And if the Lord had not cut short the days, no human being would be saved. And for the sake of the elect whom he chose, he shortened the days. So God has set it up so that it's long enough that his will is accomplished. Um, and then it, if anyone says to you, look, here's the Christ, or look, there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform signs and wonders to lead astray, if possible, the elect. Be, be on guard, I have told you all things beforehand. So Jesus is letting them know bad things may happen, these things may happen, but don't worry about it because Jesus is overcome. So the coming of the Son of Man, but in those days, after that, the tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from the sky, from the heavens and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will see out, send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. 
So we see that God is going to return. And that's an awesome message because we see that this is not it. This is not the end. Jesus Christ is going to return and he will collect the elect from all the four corners. So now we learn the lesson of the fig tree. From the tr fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branches come, become tender and put out leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see those things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. God is so good that he always provides and he provides a way out and he provides salvation and he provides hope and he provides peace. And he provides all that we need in any and every situation. So no one knows that day or hour. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. So be on guard. Keep awake. And the footnote says, and pray. So some manuscripts add the word and pray. So be on guard. Keep awake and pray. For you do not know when the time will come, and it is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge. And the footnote says, bond servants. Again, the word bond servants is for the servants that um, were willingly there. So they're not slaves, they're bond servants. In charge, each with his own work and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or in the midnight, or when the rooster crows. And the footnote says, that is the third watch of the night between midnight and 3 a.m. So, in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. We need to stay awake. We need to stay alert. We need to stay on it and remember all the things that Jesus has taught us and remember where we came from and where we're going and that God is in control. So now God himself is judge in Psalms chapter 8, chapter 50. The mighty one, I know. The mighty one God, the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes. He does not keep silence. And the footnote says, he does not keep silence. May our God, may our God come and not keep silence. So it also says that in some manuscripts. Before him is a devouring fire, around him a mighty tempest. He calls to the heavens above the, and the earth that he may judge his people. God is here to judge the people. And if we have Jesus Christ as our Savior, we're not being judged on our sin. Because Jesus Christ forgave and cleanses us of our sin. We're being judged with what we did with the name of Jesus Christ. What did you do today with the name of Jesus Christ? So he calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me my faithful ones who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness for God himself is judge. Selah. Pause. Think about it. The heavens declare his righteousness for God himself is judge. God is the one that oversees all of these things. God is the one that's in control. God is the one that can and will and does. So, um, hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel. I will testify against you. I am God, your God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your field. For every beast of the fold is mine, of the forest is mine. The cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills and and all that moves in the field to, is mine. So God is letting us know that everything he has and everything he does is within his power and his right. If I were hungry, I would tell you for the world and its fullness are mine. Do, not, do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice 
of Thanksgiving, make your Thanksgiving sacrifice to God. God is asking for our sacrifice. It doesn't have to be things. It needs to be a relationship and time with him. Okay. To perform your vows to the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver you. You shall glorify me. But to the wicked, God says, what right have you to recite my statutes or take covenant by your lips? For you hate discipline and you cast my words before you. You cast my words behind you. If you see a thief, you are pleased with him and you keep company with adulterers. So that's completely opposite of what we should be doing. If we are in line with Jesus Christ, we should be following after him, not keeping contact with wicked and deceitful people, right? You give your mouth free reign, verse 19, of evil, and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother. These things you have done before, and I have been brought silent. When God sees a situation that he's not okay with, God goes silent. And sometimes his answer is wait, and we are waiting and we don't hear from him. In this situation, he has gone silent because they are not right with God. You thought that I was like yourself, and the footnote says, or that I am he. But now I rebuke you and lay the charge before you. Mark this then, you who forget God, lest I hear you, uh, lest I tear you apart, and there be none to deliver. The one who offers thanksgiving as, the, his, sta as his sacrifice glorifies me. To one who orders his way rightly, I will show the salvation of God. God is in control. God is overseeing. God can. God will. God has. So we need to trust that God is going to. And Proverbs 10, 29 through 30, The way of the Lord is a stronghold to the blameless, but destruction to evildoers. The righteous will never be removed, and the wicked will not dwell in the land. God is in control. God will not allow things that are not just and true to reign forever. God is patient and kind, but he does allow us to have situations where we are, we fail and fall short. And those situations should draw us closer to God in our relationship with God. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for allowing me to share this time with you. Um, super sleepy these pills make me super sleepy so i'm struggling to stay awake but um thank you so much for joining me in here and um i look forward to getting these meds under control and being able to um share with you again tomorrow so god bless